Yeah, sure. And I don't mind sharing my age. I am, we'll work backwards. I am 46 now. I just turned 46. I stopped formally working at the age of 43. And I got this whole idea when I was 37. I remember it was October of 2012 and I, I was in software like we talked about. And uh, for the most part, it was a good job. But this particular job was writing code for a medical device. So, and previously I had worked in industries like insurance or point of sale systems where if you mess up the code, you might quote someone the wrong price for an insurance policy or you might charge someone the wrong taxes for a purchase. But in this case, if I screwed up the code, I could potentially cause serious harm or kill someone. So that was bad for two reasons. And, uh, the number one reason was just the stress. You always had this kind of dark cloud over your head thinking it, it, it's not like a job where you're a pilot where as soon as you go home the stress is done you've done your job but this I could have potentially introduced a bug in the code five years ago that could harm someone that I just that's been hidden all this time and took a weird situation to come up but the other reason was I didn't do a whole lot of coding it was mostly writing documentation for the FDA dealing with audits so I'm sure you are a software guy. Like I, I love the code writing part of the job. That part was really fun and cool trying to solve the puzzles. But everything that went along with it was not good. But And I had this job for a while. But at one point in October 2012, we thought there was a bug in the code. And I thought I caused it. And it was a bug that could have potentially harmed someone. It turned out that there wasn't, there was an error in the testing and it wasn't, so I didn't do anything wrong. But for that week, my stress was so overwhelming. I think I lost like 10 pounds in a week. And I remember being huddled over the toilet thinking I was going to throw up from the stress because I had, I'd let my coworkers down. I could have potentially hurt someone. And while none of that was true, the stress was overwhelming. And the thought I had at the time was, if I do this for the next 25 years, I'm going to be dead. I'm going to die of stress. I'm going to have like hypertension or a heart attack or something like that. So I Googled, how do I retire early? And uh, up came these blogs like J.D. Roth from Get Rich Slowly and Mr. Money Mustache, whose uh, co-working space we're sitting in right now. Life has come full circle. And I started reading these blogs and it was about these two guys who claimed they had retired in their 30s. And the first thought I had was, kind of shit have I landed on? <laughs> this, this must be some kind of scam where they're going to try to sell me some multi-level marketing thing, like when is the sales pitch coming? But I, I started reading through the blog, especially Mr. Money Mustache, who went into a lot of numbers like the 4% rule and the math behind early retirement. And then I'm like, well, I don't want to live off $24,000 a year like Pete does. That's too little. But this is pretty much just a simple math problem. So at that time, I did not have enough money to retire, but thankfully, I, I'd always been a saver, and there's a story behind that, too. We'd always been pretty frugal. Um, that was probably the craziest time of our life where we weren't being frugal. So we pretty much pivoted. We sold our house. We moved to a much cheaper home, and I set out a plan to retire. Uh, I figured it would take me about four years or 1,500 days, and I th I'd always enjoyed writing, so I thought, why don't I document this journey on the internet, it'll keep me honest and it'll be fun. Yeah, uh, that happened and I made my number about a year earlier than I planned, not due to any genius on my own part, but due to a, a great stock market. But uh, that's it. Now I quit and let's see, I don't even remember when I quit. Yeah, it was 2013, but I made my goal in 2012. So the, the money is easy. The emotions, not easy, but simple. The emotions that go around it are a little bit more difficult. Congratulations. Yeah. That's an awesome story. Yeah, and thank you. for the people that are wondering out there, um, you you do have a blog and we will get into numbers, um, what you're making from the blog and a lot of the details since that's what a lot of my audience um, is used to. Sure. Um, but I am super fascinated with like the emotional part. Um, it's a simple math problem, right? Like when you get down to it, it's a simple yeah. math problem. So can you just hit at a high level, the 4% rule, and then I'll provide some links. You have some excellent blog posts um, where you outline it a little bit more detailed, but yeah, what was the bottom line? Yeah. So th there's a lot of moving parts to the 4% rule, but at a real high level, what it says is once you've accumulated enough money to live on 4% of it your first year, and then after that, it adjusts for inflation. But so, for example, my number was I need $40,000 a year to live on. Therefore, I would need $1 million to retire. 
Uh, after that, it gets ratcheted up for inflation, but that is the very basics of the 4% rule. So I accumulated my $1 million in April 2012, I think. Okay. And for people that want to go deeper, you documented this whole process on your blog. Um, you list your net worth. You have you know the benchmarks that you hit. And I'm, I'm curious because it's funny to talk about money in certain circles. <laughs> it sure is, right? Um, it's the most taboo subject in the world. Right. And even, you know, around here, uh, a lot of us have uh, maybe like sort of a freer schedule. We're like-minded folks. Um, but even then, it's like slightly awkward because we're talking about money and it's just yeah. taboo. So did you get pushback from like family or friends or anything like that? Yeah, I, I was anonymous and... Uh, Eventually, a story went viral, and everyone found out what it was. And then it got kind of weird. But the thing I found is money is so taboo. Then, it, well, so I'll back up a second. When the story went public, uh, our picture showed up on the front page of Yahoo. And my initial reaction was like, oh, shit. And I was still working at the time. I'm like, but then I'm like, no one reads Yahoo News. Like, who reads that anymore? But then it turns out everyone reads Yahoo News. We started getting all these text messages like 10 minutes later saying, hey, you're on Yahoo and you've got a, a million dollars? Like, holy shit, why don't you tell us about any of this? And I'm like freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, my job's going to find out. But then I thought, maybe this will be good. The whole reason I, I've i been so open with money is I, my goal was to kind of bring it out into the open because if we all talked about it, I think we'd be a lot healthier. We could start helping each other out and not trying to hide behind expensive cars to disguise our insecurities and, all, and everything that goes along with not having money. <laughs> So I thought it would be a good exercise to be public with it. And it turned out um, we haven't helped. I, I've helped people, but no close people, no friends or family, really. I found they don't care or they just feel weird about asking about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I get random I get random emails from strangers on the Internet and mail, which is kind of weird, asking me for money. And I won't give you money, but I will give you help. And no one wants to take me up on that. They just want the easy answer. So I'd rather teach them to fish than give them the fish. What was your original question? I think I went way off on a tangent. No, uh, that, that's perfect. Um, it was about just talking about money and being public. Yeah. And... I, you know, I've got one other crazy story about that. When, when I was about 12 or 13, I, money is always fascinating to me and kind of because I didn't grow up with it. So I, yeah, there was a lot of insecurity in some scary moments as a kid where my dad would be laid off. So when I was 12 or 13, I, I went to my mom. I'm like, hey, mom, how much money does dad make? And uh, the whole reason I wanted to know this was I was just curious. I wanted to know how much I needed to make as an adult. And I was curious about what they did with their money. And then my mom gets this look on her face. She's like, that is private. You cannot ask those questions. You better not ask that again. And she got all mad about it. I'm like, oh, okay. So then plan B was to sneak down to the file cabinet in the basement and look at their paycheck stubs, which I did. And I, I eventually found out that way. But then the funny thing was a couple months after that, my mom's like, hey, come downstairs. We need to have a conversation. I'm like, oh, OK, mom, what's going on? I'm kind of scared. She's like, let's talk about the birds and the bees. And I'm like, hey, mom, I found out about all this stuff through the kid on the playground. I know what to do. I know how to be safe. So uh, I'm just going to go back outside and play. I promise I'll be I'll be good with that stuff. So my mom was OK talking to me about sex, but not about money. And I'm the exact opposite with my kids. And part of them might be because I have two girls. I'm like, oh, our younger one is like, well, how do babies get made? Um, well, mom and dad love each other. And then a baby is there. Um, but how does it get there? Am I, is that going to happen to me? I'm like, uh, I went off on a big tangent there, but it's funny how my yeah. mom was eager to talk to me about, about sex, but not money. I think that's a little bit backwards. 